passive physiologicals for the C spine. So we're going to start off with protraction and retraction. Most patients tend to need retraction because most of us have a poor posture, in which case our head and neck protracts forwards. So therefore, most patients are in need of some form of retraction. But protraction still can be necessary in, in some. But bear that in mind, retraction is probably the most important one to be able to get right. Okay, so to do uh, all of these techniques, really, we need their head off the edge of the bed. Because of that, they need to know where to come to because they can't look at it. So I tend to put my hand up here and say, move up until your... Don't do it yet, just yet, not yet. Don't, they move up until their shoulder hits your hand. As they're doing that, though, you need to support their neck. They are in pain. Once they're in position, if you move around, <clears throat> you need to learn how to move around without dangling their head all over the place. So never let go of their head. Okay? All right, so we're going to come underneath and just support. And then what I'd like you to do now is move up the bed until you reach my hand, which is on the edge. Keep going, keep going. And stop, there we go. In case they meet your hand, then they know that they've come far enough. Protraction then is the chin coming up and forwards in pretty much a straight line. So in order to do this, we're going to come underneath. So I'm supporting underneath around the occiput with this hand just under here. My thumb is almost facing upwards on the side. If I show the camera my other hand, like that. That's how my hand is on the, on the opposite side. I prefer my handling to be left hand underneath. Whichever suits you is up to you, but just so you can see what that looks like. The rest of my hand and fingers are underneath. I've got quite long fingers, so don't expect your fingers necessarily to come around as far as mine. But just make sure you can stabilise under that occiput. So then their head is stable, and I've still got a hand that's free. This hand then comes underneath the chin. Because I've got big hands, I tend to have to have my little pinky out like I'm having tea with the queen, because otherwise if I put all of my fingers on, then I start to press against people's throats, and that obviously feels quite unpleasant. So it might be three fingers, it might be two fingers, it depends on the size of their jaw. My body then comes into here, so that my pelvis and stomach can just help the top of the head, with giving them a feeling of their whole head is being supported from underneath, above, and from below. So, from here we're going to take their head up and forwards. So watch the motion, protraction there, and back down. I'll take my hand away just so you can see a little bit easier. This is not ideal, because I much prefer to you know, pull on that chin. We'll be coming up. This is where the chin bit becomes really important because we pull up a little bit more from the chin and then back down into a neutral position. You don't do it without the hand, but I'm just making it so you can see on the camera. Okay, so under there. So it's here and whatever grade you need to do, that's how you perform it. For retraction, it's the opposite. Now the hand underneath is just allowing their head to come down. This hand on top is on the chin and it pushes down through the chin and jaw. Of course, with both of these techniques, they can't speak, so please also ask them to either wave their hand, flick their hand, tap the bed, tap themselves, something, so they can communicate with their hands. Sometimes also even a thumbs up. If you say, is everything okay, you want a thumbs up, rather than what lots of patients do is they try and nod. <laughs> Of course, you're trying to work on their head and then they start nodding for you, so we don't want that. So for retraction, hand on there, again, using my stomach just to press, so I'm slightly higher up now, it's a bit of push down against the head. Hand over here, notice I've got to raise my fingers up, so I'm just pushing on the jaw. Okay, so now into retraction, giving them a double chin effectively. And then wherever I need to perform the technique, in terms of grade, is what I will do. For side flexion, two different ways we can do this. We can either do a very broad side flexion, or we can do a very specific side flexion. For a broad, it's two hands holding around the head. Fingers coming under the occiput, 
So I'm, I've got equal handling, both hands. What you can see on this side, I'm doing with my other side. If we stand in the centre, we're in the wrong place. What we need to be, we need to have our leg, where we're going, the direction we're going, over towards that side, and then I lean back in. So my right leg is, is sort of just to the right of his head, and my left leg is right out over here. You can just see there, look. See how I can move this way. If I stand head end, and as I come round, I'm kind of like swaying my hips like bad dad dancing. Okay? So move the leg into the position you need to go into. So I feel comfortable I can get round here now. And then I come back to here. Stomach onto the top of the head. Hands around. Don't block the ears. Give them space around the ears. And then you draw the head round to the side. Because now, of course, you've got the feet and legs to be able to take their head round. To whichever position you need to go. And then you can perform your mobilisation. The other way we can do this is we can try and block at a certain level. To do that, you almost have to do like a position like this with your hand. You have to feel the spinal level you want. So say I want C6, uh, so I can feel down the vertebra, or I can feel up from C7. Get to that level, put my index finger under C6, thumb then is in line to the side of C6, and then my other hand is supporting from underneath and onto the side, top of the head onto my stomach, and as I come round to the side, this, my left hand, is pushing sideways to block the motion at that level. It's a very specific way of doing um, side flexion. If I bring my hand up to a higher vertebra, say I come up to like C2, you'll see there's barely any movement. That's all I can do. I can't go any harder than that. Yeah? Because I've now restricted, there's no side flexion from the lower C spine. So that's an alternative. Rotations. If I want to rotate to the right, my right hand goes onto the right side of the face. Okay, so right hand onto the right side, fingers underneath the chin. My left hand sits that way with my fingers pointing to the right. So left hand goes under, pointing to the right. Right hand on the right side, under the chin, and I roll their head to the right. So then I lift from my left, and I effectively catch them on the right. Again, stomach in here, so they have that feeling of being surrounded. Don't be allergic to your patient and stand right back over here. Get right in. You should be right part of them here. And your head should be right in watching them, seeing if there's any adverse effects. Okay? So then we can perform our technique wherever we need to. Finally, flexions and extensions. So for flexion, we can stand at the head end, a bit like we did for the side flexion, hands both equal. And what we're going to do is holding just into the occiputs with the base of the skull. We can look down the centre of the body, so we've got a nice centre line to follow. And we can raise up, and if we need to, we can help with an overpressure from our stomach. Okay, so we can either push right up into there, or for instance if we're in the lower regions of flexion, then we could be in here. There is an alternative, which some of you might struggle with, but that's to go under here. They apply a fist, put it onto their hand, and you can stand to the side, and then you raise their head up this way. See which one you find most effective for you. Finally, for extensions, we're going to come into neck extension. Don't try and drop their entire head back. Think about what it's like to look up. That's the motion you're trying to restore. 
So it's from underneath the chin, underneath the occiput, same handling as before, so like this, under there, under there, onto the side, very similar to a rotation, just not quite as far under. And then we tip them back. So I take this hand away, tipping back from underneath. And all this hand is then doing is supporting and pulling on the chin. What you don't want to do is drop their head down. You're rotating it that way. Okay, a bit like a, a, a head tilt, chin lift type position. And that's it. Passive physiologicals for the C-spine.